Dear students, now I am going to explain about characteristics of laser. So for better understanding, please watch the previous videos. So here, what is characteristics? So characteristics is nothing but special properties or specialities. Okay, either special property or speciality of this laser. So now I am going to explain the special property of the laser light. So laser is nothing but it is a device which produces light. This light is having some special property. So to understand this characteristics of laser, I am going to explain with the help of ordinary light. By comparing with the ordinary light, I am going to explain the special property of laser so that you can understand very clearly. So now let me write what are the characteristics characteristics of laser. There are four characteristics we have. Let us see one by one. The first one is coherence. First one is the coherence. It is the very important important characteristics of laser light. And the second one is directionality. Second one is the directionality property. Okay. And the third one is monochromaticity. Third one is monochromaticity. Monochromaticity. Okay. And the fourth one is high intensity fourth one is high intensity. So out of this four, the main important property is coherence. Okay, this is what we have to understand clearly to know what is laser is. Okay, what is the special property the laser is having. So let us discuss this four property in detail. So now first I am going to explain about coherence. What is coherence? So as I said already, I am going to explain this properties with the help of ordinary light. So what is ordinary light? That means the light which is produced by the lamp or sodium vapor lamp or torch etc so these are the ordinary light sources okay and then here laser source which produces the laser light so the ordinary the how the light is produced as i discussed in the first video of introduction to laser i said this is the excited state and this is the ground state when the atom jumps from excited state to ground state it emits photon okay which emits photons that is the light right so the atom jumps from excited state to ground state it emits photon right the visible light is emitted by the atom transition from higher energy state to the lower energy state so uh, i said these are the ordinary light sources in this ordinary light sources the atom transition from excited state to ground state takes place naturally once the lifetime is over it will come back to the ground state so this process this atom transmission transition is natural process it occurs naturally okay that means naturally in the sense it is a random process we cannot have the control over it so it is the random process already we have discussed in the previous video that is interaction of radiation with matter in spontaneous emission once the 10 power minus 8 second is over the atom will come back to the ground state so it is the random process right the photons which is emitted from ordinary light sources have different energy frequencies wavelength or colors now you see the diagram these are the wavelength uh, that means light waves emitted by the ordinary light sources so now you see different color this is red color this is orange and a blue green purple like that okay violet like that so these are the colors we are having by seeing the diagram we can understand the frequency the wavelength right this is the wavelength so in between the distance between the successive crust is the wavelength, right? So now you see this, the wavelength is different, right? For a different waves, the wavelength is different. So wavelength and the frequency is inversely proportional. So automatically frequency also different. So these are having different, different wavelength, frequency, and then color also wavelength is related to the color so different color also it is giving right so therefore the photons emitted by an ordinary light sources are out of phase are out of phase okay it's not maintaining the direction as well as the angle now you see it is here it is maximum here it is maximum so these are all not maintaining the phase direction also so it, these are all out of phase this 
okay so this is what we have to understand about ordinary light sources so ordinary light sources means here the atomic transition takes place naturally and moreover it is a random we, we won't have any control over that and moreover the light which is produced by the ordinary light will have different wavelength frequency color etc and the, this light will be the photons emitted by this source will be out of phase okay so let us come to the laser now so how the laser light will be how the atomic transition takes place in laser the electron that means the atomic transition takes place artificially takes place artificially so the technique called stimulated emission in the previous video i explained clearly about the stimulated emission so due to the stimulated emission the emission is done artificially by means of the incident photon so the atomic transition takes place artificially or otherwise we can say it is occurs that atomic transition occurs in specific time specific time but in this case it is random but it occurs in the specific time right and then the all the photons emitted in the laser have same energy frequency wavelength now you see the diagram all are maintaining the same wavelength okay all are having the same wavelength so that the photons will have same energy wavelength frequency as well as the color too the color too okay so the, all the photons emitted in lasers have the same energy frequency or wavelength hence the light waves of laser light have single wavelength this is what you have to understand single wavelength or color right therefore the wavelengths of the laser light are in phase with each other that is the important thing you have to understand in phase but in this case it is out of phase but here all are maintaining the same direction and angle so in phase with each other so thus light generated by laser is highly coherent highly coherent so coherent means the wave that the light waves should maintain same energy wavelength frequency color as well as phase so this property is called coherent property and the laser light is the laser which is the light which is generated by the laser is highly coherent in laser a technique called stimulated emission which is used to produce the light already i mentioned stimulated emission is the important process important technique stimulated emission so as you know well light a laser abbreviation for the laser is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation this is what we are discussing okay so because of this coherent what is happening a large amount of power can be concentrated in a narrow space can be concentrated in a narrow space so that is the speciality of the laser that is the speciality of the laser so now i hope you understand what is the difference between ordinary light and laser and how it is highly coherent okay what are the properties enhancing that highly coherent okay so now we will go to the next topic that is directionality property the second property is called directionality property so now again i am going to take the help of ordinary light so you know the ordinary light will be produced by sodium vapor lamp torch light lamp etc so in conventional light sources light will travel in random direction now you see this is the torch okay so it is spreads in all the direction that is very important spreading the light is spreading in all direction spreading in all directions okay therefore this light sources emit light in different directions but in case of laser all photons will travel in the same direction therefore laser emits light only in one direction only in one direction so by seeing the diagram you can understand it's a spread this is spreading but here there is no spread it travels in one direction so this property is called directionality property it can travel only in one direction that property is directionality property now you see the width of this light uh, light beam is extremely spread over that it is wider it is wider it it spreads but here you see it is narrow it is narrow right so the width of the laser beam is extremely narrow hence a laser beam can travel to long distances without spreading here spreading is there but here 
without spreading it can travel for a longer distance for example now this ordinary light is traveling for 2 kilometers you just imagine 2 kilometers if it is traveling means it's spread that means how much it diverge is also 2 kilometer okay but in case of this laser light if it is traveling for 2 km maybe its spread may be around 2 cm only its spread may be around 2 cm so that is the difference between ordinary light and laser in case of the directionality so what we are talking about that that a laser can travel for a long distance without any spreading this property is called directionality property so now we completed the second property next one is the monochromaticity monochromaticity in the first uh, topic itself that is coherence itself we have discussed about this monochromaticity let me explain one more time so mono means single mono means single and chrome means color okay single color so the color is related to the wavelength single color means single wavelength already we have seen ordinary light so uh, what is that monochromatic light means a light containing a single color okay single color or wavelength the photons which are emitted from the ordinary light sources have different energy different frequency different wavelength okay and then out of phase also so now the wavelength is changing here so we can say the ordinary light sources have many wavelength now you see the difference it has many wavelength or color therefore ordinary light is a mixture of waves okay it is a mixture of waves having different frequencies or uh, different wavelengths okay but in laser all the emitted photons have the same energy already we have discussed in the first property same energy same frequency same wavelength everything okay and the same phase too okay so therefore laser light covers a very narrow range of frequencies or wavelength so it consists of the single wavelength it consists of the single wavelength so it emits the single color so that is the important property of the laser so laser is having high monochromaticity okay high monochromaticity mono means single chrome means color so it contains the single color color is related to wavelength so it contains the single wavelength or it uh, covers a very narrow range of frequencies or wavelengths okay so this is the third property third speciality of the laser and the last one is the high intensity so intensity intensity is nothing but uh, intensity is equal to power per unit area power per unit area that is energy per unit normal area okay so in uh, ordinary term okay for understanding let me explain this power or intensity is related to brightness power or intensity is related to the brightness how much bright the laser light will be okay so that uh, second uh, let me go to the second property so you can understand easily about this directionality property so now already i said the ordinary light spreads in all the direction okay it spread in all the direction the intensity reaching the target for example i am checking over here the intensity re reaching the target is very less it will be very very less why because it is spreading in all the direction the brightness over this point will be very very less but when we come to the laser light if you check over this okay due to high directionality the intensity of laser beam reaching the target is of high intense okay here the intensity is very less but here it is high intense beam so that is what the fourth property let us go to the page again so intensity intensity reaching target is less is less why because it spreads the ordinary light spreads but a laser light does not spread it does not diverge that is the reason the intensity reaching the target will be high enough okay for example 1 milliwatt m for milli w for watt it's about power okay 1 milliwatt of 1 milliwatt power of helium neon laser okay 1 milliwatt power of helium neon laser will be brighter than the sunlight it appears okay the 1 milliwatt power of helium neon laser appears 
to be brighter than the sunlight to be brighter than the sunlight why because it does not spread the laser light does not spread so the uh, target which is reaching that that means the intensity which reaching the target will be high enough so that is the fourth property of the high intensity the fourth property of the laser light okay so now we have completed the four properties four specialities of the laser light so out of this four specialities the first one is very very important that is coherence so that the light it is an important characteristics of the laser beam i hope you understand this four specialities that is characteristics of laser if you have any doubt please ask me in the comment box thank you everyone